Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I got here Hunt for Wolverine, the claws of a killer. I'm still hunting for Wolverine because he wasn't in this comic, and I just got, I got just, just got tricked. Um, so anyway, this is uh, the, they've got the Hunt. There was a book that was just called Hunt for Wolverine by Charles Soule and David Marquez, and it was really, really good. And then they split it off into four different side quests. Uh, I haven't read Adamantium Agenda. Weapon Lost 1 was boring. Claws of Killer 1 was really boring. I didn't... I, I don't know what happened. If I had like a palsy in my forearm or something like that, I cannot believe I picked a variant edition cover this bad. All I can imagine is maybe that the regular one. But there was a Greg Land cover and all the ad advertising that was actually pretty cool. But this is just awful. First of all, plot twist. No, this does not happen at all. Uh, what was it called? Um... Sabretooth, Lady Death Strike, and Child Support over here. They don't fight. They talk in a diner, and then they sit in some, like, hatchback <laughs> car that costs, like, 6800 bucks. Anyway, blah, 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 they're looking for uh, his body. So then we get this, and I brought this up a lot, and I'm hoping people understand it. We're at, what's, we're at something called peak TV right now, which means there's something like 450 scripted dramatic shows. That's not counting like, you know, sports and reality shows and stuff like that. Anyway, there's this channel called Crackle, and it is like the lowest low budget TV shows. And this whole thing read like a Crackle TV show. In Crackle TV show, you get hired and you have to bring your own clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and like half of them are, are, are shot like inside like hotel rooms and they're cheap hotel rooms. So anyway, uh, whatever, in the middle of nowhere, there's a bunch of generic people. So this is what's amazing. Mariko Tamaki is the one who did those awful She-Hulk episodes. Oh man, that like, I built my channel off of those. Terrible, terrible. Uh, there was like a five issue of She-Hulk uh, fighting a uh, YouTube cooking show host who got turned into a monster. And everything was food related. This one, we start off right here in a diner, but it's weird. Like, they don't talk. It had to be a restaurant, because fatties. But uh, they don't really bring up the, just, okay, the power's out. We gotta go to get the power. And then like, oh, there's Wolverine. He's just standing there with his claws out. Except for, it's obviously not gonna be Wolverine. It's obviously, since he then is talking, you know, to this uh, strike force, it's obvious that it's some bad guy just looking like him. So you go, um, okay, this is the bit we're playing. We've waited like three years for Wolverine to come back, and now we got oh, whatever. So then uh, we very, very slowly get to uh, the very unattractive. By the way, I want to uh, compare and contrast. So we've we're, we're we're a third of into a book that was what four dollars. So we've got a wasted page there. We got slow three, four, five, six, okay, six pages in. And uh, here's the waitress. This is the waitress. This horrific looking old, I was gonna say man woman, but I'm getting some distinct ET vibes from that face. So let's just say a man woman ET hybrid. So here's the deal. Here is Agents of Shield in issue in either it's either seven or seven hundredth season. I'm not sure. It's one of those two. Um, Agents of Shield got had like horrible reviews from comic fans like the first two seasons, and now people are saying like, dude, it's legitimately good. Let's uh, compare and contrast. We have a bunch of actors from their twenties to probably I think Ming Na Wen and let's call. Uh, this guy, Zach, in four years, uh, 50s. Not that I'm gonna be in my 50s, but I'm gonna look, I already look like, eh, I'm gonna look like in my 50s in four years. Let's notice something, commonalities about all of these people. Yes, they're all photogenic, even the older ones. This is what we get. Frickin' Leonard Skinner roadie and the 87th best looking woman on a reservation of 200 people. Can you make them look a little, you know, you know, you draw them like a Ron Perlman type, you know, more like, I don't, I feel like I 
need like some kind of flea powder on me now. So then we cut to, remember this? Remember this? I mean, it's still a flat angle, but it's kind of dynamic. And then here are, here's the, here's the people. This is the intro. That's the intro. Okay. And then they just very, 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 very slowly. I like how they get in a fight and they don't even stand up. Like they're still sitting. That is a lazy low T fight. You want to go? The guy starts getting out of the, the booth. No, no, I, I didn't mean we were going to fight and stand. I meant like sit fighting. I don't think it's possible. Okay, so I talked about in the live stream how it's impossible to poop without peeing. I think it's impossible to fight while sitting. I've seen some world star videos where like a guy in a wheelchair will come out of like, have you seen that one where he comes out of like the right side of the frame? Uh, you end up spilling onto the ground. It's pretty hard to fight while sitting. I'm pretty sure it's impossible to do. So then we cut into these, again, like really low budget. Okay, so there's some soldiers. Okay, and then so oh boy. Get uh, oh, I'm, thanks for yeah. That's a dynamic page right there. Okay, I like Butch Juice, but it's clearly, clearly, obvious. The Butches ran out of juice. <sighs> I'm sorry. I apologize for that pun. He squeezed it out of me. But anyway. Uh, then we cut back to the crackle video shoot. They're like, come on, we got to hit 50 more scenes. I swear every crackle TV show is shot in like one day. Um, so then he's like, I'm going to kill, we're going to kill him. But he's dead. But if you look at these dy dynamic faces, this is a guy agreeing to find his father's corpse, but kill him and, or they're going to dismember him and sell the corpse. Or he's going to kill him if he's not really dead. And that's the expression. That's the expression. This is the expression I used to have when I went to Coinstar when I was flat broke. Just walking in, just like, hey guys. You always have to pretend like you're not going to the... Like when you're broke and you got to buy groceries using Coinstar. Like you got to kind of... You try to be invisible. Okay, so anyway, then... Um, <laughs> Then they get up. Ooh, they stand. Ooh, ah, hey, whoa, whoa, I was wrong. There is action in this comic. Sabretooth stands up and he crumples a beer can and that's... Okay, okay, so then uh, the Crackle TV show. By the way, I'm not joking. My ex was a big TV watcher. She used to watch everything. 90% of Crackle TV shows take place at some really cheap uh, hotel. And there's a reason for that, because that's where the crew is staying. <laughs> so then he, he pulls up, and this is, this is it. I know that bastard's smell. I don't smell it. He's not here. Time to go home. Slowly drinking. And look, look at this dynamic. Wow. Wow. Good job. <laughs> what car is this? Okay, uh, then, uh, oh, then he gets out, and then he walks in, and uh, the guy with the senses of Wolverine uh, is uh, surprised. He doesn't know dead bodies until he steps on them, and then he's surprised by soldiers. Didn't smell them, didn't hear them, nothing. Didn't feel the vibrations of their footsteps through the, the wooden slats of the porch, nothing. And then he pops his claws out. In the most undynamic way possible. What is that face? What is that face? Talk or die. Or die anyway. What if he said talk or eventually die of old age? That would have been scary. So then uh, we get this really lazy, poorly drawn fight. Oh my gosh, zombies. And then like the only dramatic part is that his, uh, his, you know, his healing power doesn't work. But then he just goes, what the F is this? What kind of dialogue is that? Making me have Rich Evans voice. Okay, so then here's an advertisement for the Sentry uh, from Jeff Lemire. And uh, I'm a little confused about this because people were telling me Jeff Lemire uh, qu rage quit Marvel like a year ago. So I don't know. I've always thought that uh, the... Um, the Sentry was like a fun, interesting idea, but 
Yeah, so you're supposed to come back for issue two. What? I don't even want to come back for issue one, and it's in my hands. Uh, and then you're supposed to buy four times four, 16, and then there, just bring him back. This is what this should have been. It should have been a four issue miniseries with Charles Soule and David Marquez. They knocked it out of the park in that first one that was just called Hunt for Wolverine, which I guess is the only one. And then you get this freaking morning zoo crew of purse puppies and super talent boys and people who actually are talented, Butch, who just ran out of enthusiasm for this project. I, I said I'm sorry. I'm not going to repeat the bad puns. Squeeze me. Uh, but anyway, thanks for uh, watching. This is definitely... This book sucked. So I figured out the deal with when, why uh, sometimes this falls and sometimes it doesn't. It has to do with how uh, uh, chubby or skinny I am. When I'm skinnier, I can hold the, I can hold it with my jaw against my clavicle, but when I got a little fat pad there, it slips out. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the super chat and the Patreon. You're funding original content. I'll have uh, more. A lot more new comic reviews up in the next uh, two days. Thanks for watching. Bye.